So growing up, I wanted to be a doctor. Watching my mom build her career in the health insurance industry showed me the power of health, community, and the potential success that that could bring. She taught me that I could be whatever I wanted. I just had to dress the part. And so I did. Even when I worked as a waitress, I would dress in business casual clothes, go downtown to my job, put on my waitress dirty gear, work a full shift, and then as soon as I was done, change back into my business clothes and catch that rush hour train back uptown. Sometimes that paid off. Like when I finally landed my first corporate job in healthcare, I dressed the part even more. This Bronx girl swapped her curly hair, Jordans, and my big hoop earrings for a fresh blowout, some heels, and a pair of pearls. They weren't real, but still. <laughs> I wore those pearls every day to work where I trained doctors in the industry. I made it. I finally had a good job, a great salary. I was learning so much. I could see the life I had dreamed of finally becoming a reality. Then one day, the click clack of those heels led me to a Bronx emergency room. But this time, it wasn't for work. After two days of testing and endless exams, I finally got the news. My mom had cancer. Suddenly, the pearls seemed to matter more. I knew that this was the beginning of a journey, one that my mom prepared me for, and I wasn't gonna let her face this alone. And with everything that I had seen growing up in the Bronx, all the things I learned over time, all the work I was doing in healthcare, I knew I could figure this out. I was wrong. Despite my high hopes and the sense of security my job brought me, I quickly realized that the system didn't care who I knew, what I wore, or how well I communicated. Me and my mom would always be Latinas from the Bronx on Medicaid. And no amount of pearls, real or fake, would help me transcend a healthcare system that was complicated and not designed to treat people equitably. I felt angry. I was lonely, but also determined. Because anyone from the Bronx knows when things get hard, we go harder. So I decided to double down. I was gonna fix this problem, a broken healthcare system, because no one should have to experience this kind of pain and loneliness. One of the first things they told us when we were desperate for answers was that my mom couldn't have any organic foods or vegetables. Basically, they said the chemo would make her weak, and if there was bacteria on the food, it could make things worse. It was recommended that she only eat processed foods. Basically anything that came in a package or pre-wrapped. And coming from a Puerto Rican family where my grandfather grew vegetables on a farm growing up, even in our tiny little kitchen window in New York City, he still grew those tomatoes. Natural foods were a part of our culture. It was who we are. This was the first of many moments to come where what I knew intuitively would contradict with what I was being told. For most of us, especially if you are black, brown, immigrant, poor, when we encounter the healthcare system, whether it's through an emergency or just trying to get routine care, we're often made to feel like we are the problem. They say we don't understand what's happening, we don't follow directions. We can't be trusted. But there, the reality is, but the reality is, there aren't strong enough bootstraps to pick ourselves up by. There isn't enough knowledge to trickle down, to reach communities that were never listened to or provided resources in the first place. 
at this point in my life, I was literate in healthcare. I knew the difference between co-pays and deductibles, even how to navigate prior authorizations. I had the scientific knowledge of my mom's condition and her diagnosis. I knew what the treatment options were for leukemia. I was speaking their language, but they weren't speaking mine. Even I, who knew how to read, write, and talk the language of healthcare, was condescended to. It made me realize healthcare needed to change and led me to start Radical Health. <laughs> Angela Davis said, radical simply means grasping things at the root. And Radical Health gets to the root of healthcare through community. You see, this all started around my kitchen table. I invited people and listened to the folks tell their stories for hours on end. I knew that I wasn't the only one who was frustrated and alone. In fact, there were many people, doctors, teachers, strangers on the street, maybe many of you here today who feel the same way. These early conversations were the blueprint for what radical health would be. And I see them as the future of what healthcare could look like across the United States. We know that conversations alone are not enough. We need action. Who listens to you when your doctor won't? Where do you go when you feel alone and frustrated with your health? What happens afterwards? The circle that happened in person at my kitchen table was not enough. But what became clear over those nine months, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But what became clear over those nine months was that there was a social and cultural disconnect. Today, we're taking it a step further by using tech to bring those early conversations online using indigenous circles. There, we connect peers in conversations with one another and add in a chat where you are set up to ask questions of your provider before, during, or after a visit. We're here to help you understand your health and navigate this experience on your terms. This work that started in the Bronx is now expanding across the country. Good or bad, the Bronx has a reputation that precedes it. For years, researchers studying the Bronx come to our borough to study our, our problems and our pain. They look at how highways built in the 1920s impact our high rates of asthma. They study how a lack of mental health resources here in the Bronx is tied to a faulty insurance model. We've had some of the worst health outcomes in the United States. But let me tell you, we're more than a case study. We're a community. And if it wasn't for the Bronx, <laughs> this radical health thing probably wouldn't be going on. Because when the healthcare system failed me, my community stepped up. In those early days when I sat at my kitchen table listening to my friends and neighbors, I realized I didn't need a seat at somebody else's table. I needed to add more of the right chairs to my own. <laughs> Each and every one of us are impacted by the healthcare system. 
And we must be the co-authors and leaders of this change. So today, I'm asking you to pull up. Have the conversations about your health. Ask the questions. Build the community with one another. Because when we rebuild a healthcare system for the Bronx, by the Bronx, we're building a better system for everyone. Thank you.